friends welcome back to the next session on operations planning scheduling and control now let's begin with our learning in this particular session we'll be understanding and dealing with the concept of kanban the learning objectives at the end of this particular session the learners will be able to understand or define what do we mean by kanban what are the various roles of operations planning that have been undertaken in terms of kanban explain how kanban is been implemented and lastly what how the activities are undertaken in kanban now let's uh, first understand what exactly is kanban so kanban is all a well known framework for an agile and devops software development activity that is been undertaken in a business organization so in a business activity or a manufacturing unit it necessitates that a real time capacity communication and complete work openness needs to be undertaken so on a kanban board work items have been visually depicted allowing team members to view the status of each piece of work at an any moment so uh, kanban is a particular activity wherein various cards or various colors have been used to identify which type of work is been completed and which type of work is not been completed on the basis of certain cards the priority or the urgency and importance of a certain work can be identified and on those particular basis we can easily identify as to which work is been completed which work is lagging which work is not been completed and which work is continuously into process so as in a particular diagram or a particular picture you can see kanban cards can be prepared to identify or to identify a certain work that is a to do work a in progress work a completed that is a done work and a booking a backlog work so accordingly various colors are also been provided and on the basis of colors we can have an understanding or a under composition as to which color represents which activity and which board is more that is the completion of work that is pro work in progress work the backlog work and the to do activity work so what are the various procedures or activities that have been performed so now in this particular case on a requirement task or an incident progress on the basis of the uh, uh, card that has been prepared you can identify the uh, various uh, kanban activities can be divided into five categories those particular five categories that can be associated is the backlog work the unplanned uh, work the in progress work the developed work the tested work and lastly the completed work and accordingly you can have various cards that can be associated for it so for a user story if a particular query is been raised or if a particular story or problem is been identified then which priority is to be given whether it's a tk whether it's ik in and so on so accordingly every level is having a certain work and when a particular work gets developed or a particular work gets completed then according to the user story and a tk or in or a particular card is been moved so and based on a particular person now it may be a denotation a denotation of a certain person tk means a certain person and in means a certain person so which person has raised which card and which query has been placed and accordingly the kanban shows about which activity needs to be undertaken now let's understand how or i have another example of a kanban desk so in case of a business organization or manufacturing unit we have a, we can have a kanban desk on on which we can have a understanding of the stories the to do the in progress the testing and the done work and wherein we have the various uh, cards or the various colors or the various denomination of the tags which shows which preference or which priority of work is been undertaken and what are the number of works that we have completed so work number 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on everyone has been shown and accordingly how work is been doing and in what progress so the every work that has been planned at the first level whether it has been completed or whether it is not been completed what is the stage of the 12th work what is the stage of the 9th work what is the stage of the 5th work and so on so on the basis of certain numberings on the basis of certain colors on the basis of certain cards we can easily identify about which card is more preferred which card is more prioritized and which activity is been completed and which activity is not been completed so that is the helpful or that is the consideration of kanban desk on which basis we can identify a certain card activity which is been completed or which is not been completed now let's understand what are the four principles of a kanban or practices the first principle is visualization of the work so on the basis of the kanban it is very easy to visualize or identify what work is been completed and how those works have been completed so visualization is very important or it is very essential or it is easy limit work to a certain pro work in progress so whatever work that we are conducting we can limit uh, we can easily limitize to a certain work of a certain activity and how those works can be completed in a certain consideration so limitation of work in progress is easily possible on the basis of kanban cards that are applicable or that are available focus on a certain flow so whatever focus that we have a certain activity so on the basis of kanban card we can easily identify and we can focus on what activity can be completed and in what level those activities can be conduct, conducted in a process way so 
flow or a series of activities can be identified and accordingly on the basis of certain numberings, the flow can be conducted in a very better constitution. The continuous improvement. So the various continuous improvement activities as to which steps can be undertaken, how the process flows can be undertaken and how continuous activities can be improvised can be undertaken with the help of Kanban practices that can be implemented. Now let's understand what are the various six rules of Kanban. So the various six rules of Kanban that can be used or that can be implemented in the business organizations are number one, never pass on a defective product. So whenever we have a defective product or a particular uh, activity or a cycle is very defective, we must not use or we must not pass that particular activity. The next consideration is take only what has been needed. So only those particular activity that should be undertaken in a business organization, which is, of any, uh, which is of importance and which is necessary or which is needed for the completion. So only such activities needs to be conducted. Producing the exact quantity that has been required. So we must only produce or we must only manufacture only those quantity which has been required and which has been available as per the quantity. So as per the demand and supply factors, only those produce or exaction or production or production of those quantity needs to be undertaken. The level of production. So what is the level of production? On the basis of level of production, all the activities needs to be planned in business organization and from those particular considerations, the rules of Kanban as to the the level of production as to the total production capacity needs to be ascertained and identified, and it needs to be completed. The fine tuning production. So, what fine tuning production activities have been required, how we can complete those activities, and so on. So, fine tuning of production activities is initially required, and on those particular basis, the fine tuning can be undertaken. And the last rule of Kanban is stabilizing and rationalizing the processes. So, whatever activity that we need to conduct, how do we stabilize, how do we rationalize those activities, and in what way? or the level those activities can be completed. So from those particular perspectives, we can easily identify and understand about the stabilization and rationalization of the process activities. Now let's understand what is the process or the methods of Kanban that can be undertaken. So a particular example of Mr. Robert has been given. So a particular Kanban card that he has been placed that is with respect to a backlog or order or make decision or a done decision. So accordingly, the Kanban cards has to A, B, C, G, E, F, and a red color underline can be seen in this particular consideration. So the various preferences of the methods of the Kanban are continuous and more activity, the concept of a fluid activity, the activity of a scrum level, the activity of a short level, the activity of a structured work, the activity which is of a sprint level, and lastly, which is of an agile nature. So depending on the which type of method or the product we are conducting, depending on what is the level of preference or activity, we need to identify what type of method we need to apply whether the activities of a continuous nature, fluid nature, scrum level, uh, short method, structured work, sprint, and agile. So these are the different types of work pressures or work activities that we need to conduct. And based on their preferences, based on their level, based on their type, composition, and so on, we need to identify which method of Kanban needs to be used. And accordingly, the method that is differently available for different products or different machines or different activities can be implemented and they can be used. Now let's understand what is the various emphasis or importance of Kanban. So without a Kanban, no object has been produced or no objects have been moved. So in order to create a set or a sequence or a series of certain activities, Kanban is very essential and important. And without a Kanban, no objects or activities can be produced or moved from one level to another level. The another emphasis or importance of Kanban is very item should be every item should be accompanied by a certain Kanban and defects and inaccuracy components are never passed into the next step. So if there is a defective activity or a level of certain product or a certain activity, then those activities are not being moved if there is no applicability of Kanban. So Kanban helps to identify your defect activity and on those particular basis, the prioritization of those activities can be identified in very better and an easy consideration. So accompanying of a certain Kanban is very essential and important possible with the help of Kanban. And lastly, the number of Kanbans is deliberately lowered in order to minimize inventory and how do we identify those issues. So number of Kanbans can be deliberately lowered in order to identify how do we minimize the level of inventory and how do we identify which are the various critical issues and how those critical issues need to be addressed. So if there's a certain problem in the organization, how do we address that particular problem? What are the various sources that needs to be identified for its solution? and within what duration or priority or performance those particular solutions needs to be completed. Now let's understand what are the two most important types of Kanban. So the first uh, important type of Kanban is a production Kanban, that is AP Kanban, and the second is the transportation Kanban, that is AT Kanban. So in case of a production Kanban, the actor Kanban that is related to the production activity or the manufacturing activity that is 
the raw material, the quality of materials, the cost of material, the process of raw materials, movement of raw materials, and so on. The any kanban or the activity that has been undertaken for the production level or the production of goods and services, it's called as a P kanban or a production kanban. The second important method or type of kanban is the transportation kanban. So transportation kanban is a T kanban in which the movement of goods and services from one level to another level, one machinery to another machinery, one assembly to another assembly line is being taken and on those particular basis, the transportation kanban can be identified. The transportation kanban also takes into account on actual board as a certain perspective wherein the level of activity is been moving from one level to another level or prioritization to a higher like a prioritization to the lower prioritization moment of the completion of task from the beginning to the closure or to the end of a certain task or a certain activity. So that is the consideration of the transportation kanban. So transportation kanban is also essentially important and we need to assess and identify about how those activities are being undertaken from the movement of goods, movement of services from one level to another level and how those activities are being undertaken for the movement of goods and services in the effective level. So the production kanban and tra transportation kanban are the two major types of categories of kanban implementation strategies that can be undertaken, and it can be either a activity of an production kanban level or it can be an activity of an transportation kanban level. Now let's understand what do we mean by or what is the difference between a kaizen and what is the difference between a kanban. So kaizen is a Japanese con con concept that focuses on achieving an ad hoc improvements in several domains. So Kaizen means continuous improvement. So what we are looking for, we are looking for the continuous improvement in a certain activity or a certain processes and achieving an ad hoc improvement. So we need to achieve a certain short term requirements and we need in order to achieve that short term requirements or improvements, we have several domains or several steps that needs to be taken. And that is the concept of Kaizen. In case of an Kanban, on the other hand, it is meant to visually examine the workflow in a linear fashion in order to uncover the large scale ways in which production processes may be improvised, ultimately leading to significant outputs and gains. So Kanban focus on an activity, which is undertaken on the basis of visual representation. Kaizen does not have any visual representation, but it only focuses on activities for the improvements as a part of the consideration. So continuous improvement. So it only focuses on certain activities needs to be undertaken. But Kanban focuses on what activities needs to be undertaken, how the process flow or the work of activities needs to be undertaken, what is the prioritization of certain activities, well, how we should give a certain preference as to first, second, and third level. How do we identify a certain color codes for those particular activities and how preferences for those Kanban can be provided. So these are the perspectives of the differentiation between a Kaizen and how a Kanban can be limited. So in a short run or in the long run, a particular Kaizen can be limited or a particular long run, the Kanban can be limited. So both activities go simultaneously, both are the Japanese techniques and accordingly, organization can implement either a Kaizen perspective or they can implement a Kanban perspective, whichever is more feasible. Work, but Kanban is a widely used technique and technology on which basis the continuous improvement or the continuous uh, scaling of uh, the qualitative work can be undertaken by a manufacturing unit or by a sales unit. So and, uh, concluding, without including a particular Kanban, no object have been produced or they have been moved. And every item that has been there in the business organization should have a composition of Kanban as a major perspective. So every item that has been appropriate for a certain Kanban, we need to assess and we need to identify that should be a Kanban into existence and defects and inaccurate quantities are never passed on to a next step. So we must always be very confirmed and sure as to an implementation or involvement of a certain Kanban and the number of activities that have been there in the Kanban should be deliberately lowered in order to identify as to how we minimize the level of inventory and how do we identify the issues that have been associated. So for controlling of those particular issues, the involvement of Kanban is essentially required and the Kanban needs to be implemented as the continuous improvement as a part of an uh, scaling up of the activities for reduction of waste in the organization for continuous of effective improvements. Now let's summarize what we have learned in this particular session. In this particular session, we have understood what do we mean by Kanban, what is which planning is been required in terms of a Kanban, how to implement a Kanban in a business organization, how are the activities that have been performed in terms of a Kanban. I hope you must have enjoyed the learning in this particular session. We'll stay connected and we'll continue with our learning. Thank you for your patience listening. Thank you.